A hash function is any function that can be used to map data of arbitrary size to data of fixed size. The values returned by a hash function are called hash values, hash codes, hash sums, or simply hashes. One use is a data structure called a hash table, widely used in computer software for rapid data lookup. Hash functions accelerate table or database lookup by detecting duplicated records in a large file. An example is finding similar stretches in DNA sequences. They are also useful in cryptography. A cryptographic hash function allows one to easily verify that some input data maps to a given hash value, but if the input data is unknown, it is deliberately difficult to reconstruct it by knowing the stored hash value. This is used for assuring integrity of transmitted data, and is the building block for HMACs, which provide message authentication. Hash functions are related to check sums, check digits, fingerprints, randomization functions, error correcting codes, and ciphers. Although these concepts overlap to some extent, each has its own uses and requirements and is designed and optimized differently. The Hash Keeper database maintained by the American National Drug Intelligence Center, for instance, is more aptly described as a catalog of file fingerprints than of hash values. Uses Hash tables hash functions are primarily used in hash tables to quickly locate a data record given its search key. Specifically, the hash function is used to map the search key to an index. The index gives the place in the hash table where the corresponding record should be stored. Hash tables, in turn, are used to implement associative arrays and dynamic sets. Typically, the domain of a hash function is larger than its range, and so it will map several different keys to the same index. Therefore, each slot of a hash table is associated with a set of records, rather than a single record. For this reason, each slot of a hash table is often called a bucket, and hash values are also called bucket indices. Thus, the hash function only hints at the record's location, it tells where one should start looking for it. Still, in a half-full table, a good hash function will typically narrow the search down to only one or two entries. Caches hash functions are also used to build caches for large data sets stored in slow media. A cache is generally simpler than a hashed search table, since any collision can be resolved by discarding or writing back the older of the two colliding items. This is also used in file comparison. Bloom filters hash functions are an essential ingredient of the Bloom filter, a space-efficient probabilistic data structure that is used to test whether an element is a member of a set. Finding duplicate records when storing records in a large unsorted file, one may use a hash function to map each record to an index into a table T, and to collect in each bucket T, I, a list of the numbers of all records with the same hash value I. Once the table is complete, any two duplicate records will end up in the same bucket. The duplicates can then be found by scanning every bucket T, I, which contains two or more members, fetching those records, and comparing them. With a table of appropriate size, this method is likely to be much faster than any alternative approach. Protecting data A hash value can be used to uniquely identify secret information. This requires that the hash function is collision resistant, which means that it is very hard to find data that generate the same hash value. These functions are categorized into cryptographic hash functions and provably secure hash functions. Functions in the second category are the most secure but also too slow for most practical purposes. Collision resistance is accomplished in part by generating very large hash values. For example, SHA-1, one of the most widely used cryptographic hash functions, generates 160-bit values. Finding similar records hash functions can also be used to locate table records whose key is similar, but not identical, to a given key, or pairs of records in a large file which have similar keys. 
For that purpose, one needs a hash function that maps similar keys to hash values that differ by at most m, where m is a small integer. Then one need only check the records in each bucket t, i, against those in buckets t, i plus k, where k ranges between minus m and m. This class includes the so-called acoustic fingerprint algorithms that are used to locate similar sounding entries in large collection of audio files. For this application, the hash function must be as insensitive as possible to data capture or transmission errors, and to trivial changes such as timing and volume changes, compression, etc. Finding similar substrings The same techniques can be used to find equal or similar stretches in a large collection of strings such as a document repository or a genomic database. In this case, the input strings are broken into many small pieces, and a hash function is used to detect potentially equal pieces, as above. The rabin karp algorithm is a relatively fast string searching algorithm that works in no time on average. It is based on the use of hashing to compare strings. Geometric hashing This principle is widely used in computer graphics, computational geometry and many other disciplines to solve many proximity problems in the plane or in three-dimensional space, such as finding closest pairs in a set of points, similar shapes in a list of shapes, similar images in an image database, and so on. In these applications, the set of all inputs is some sort of metric space and the hashing function can be interpreted as a partition of that space into a grid of cells. The table is often an array with two or more indices, and the hash function returns an index tuple. This special case of hashing is known as geometric hashing or the grid method. Geometric hashing is also used in telecommunications to encode and compress multidimensional signals. Standard uses of hashing in cryptography Some standard applications that employ hash functions include authentication, message integrity, message fingerprinting, data corruption detection, and digital signature efficiency. Properties Good hash functions, in the original sense of the term, are usually required to satisfy certain properties listed below. The exact requirements are dependent on the application. For example, a hash function well suited to indexing data will probably be a poor choice for a cryptographic hash function. Determinism A hash procedure must be deterministic, meaning that for a given input value it must always generate the same hash value. In other words, it must be a function of the data to be hashed in the mathematical sense of the term. This requirement excludes hash functions that depend on external variable parameters, such as pseudo-random number generators or the time of day. It also excludes functions that depend on the memory address of the object being hashed in cases that the address may change during execution, although sometimes rehashing of the item is possible. The determinism is in the context of the reuse of the function. For example, Python adds the feature that hash functions are randomized seed that is decided once, when the process starts. It is still a valid hash function when used in within a single run. But if the values are persisted they can no longer be treated as valid hash values, since in the next run the random value might differ. Uniformity A good hash function should map the expected inputs as evenly as possible over its output range. That is, every hash value in the output range should be generated with roughly the same probability. The reason for this last requirement is that the cost of hashing-based methods goes up sharply as the number of collisions, pairs of inputs that are mapped to the same hash value, increases. If some hash values are more likely to occur than others, a larger fraction of the lookup operations will have to search through a larger set of colliding table entries. Note that this criterion only requires the value to be uniformly distributed, not random in any sense. A good randomizing function is generally a good choice as a hash function, but the converse need not be true. Hash tables often contain only a small subset of the valid inputs. For instance, a club membership list may contain only a hundred or so member names out of the very large set of all possible names. 
In these cases, the uniformity criterion should hold for almost all typical subsets of entries that may be found in the table, not just for the global set of all possible entries. In other words, if a typical set of M records is hashed to N table slots, the probability of a bucket receiving many more than M N records should be vanishingly small. In particular, if M is less than N, very few buckets should have more than one or two records. When testing a hash function, the uniformity of the distribution of hash values can be evaluated by the chi-squared test. Defined range It is often desirable that the output of a hash function have fixed size. If, for example, the output is constrained to 32-bit integer values, the hash values can be used to index into an array. Such hashing is commonly used to accelerate data searches. On the other hand, cryptographic hash functions produce much larger hash values. In order to ensure the computational complexity of brute force inversion, for example, SHA-1, one of the most widely used cryptographic hash functions, produces a 160-bit value. Producing fixed length output from variable length input can be accomplished by breaking the input data into chunks of specific size. Hash functions used for data searches use some arithmetic expression which iteratively processes chunks of the input to produce the hash value. In cryptographic hash functions, these chunks are processed by a one-way compression function, with the last chunk being padded if necessary. In this case, their size, which is called block size, is much bigger than the size of the hash value. For example, in SHA-1, the hash value is 160 bits and the block size 512 bits. Variable range In many applications, the range of hash values may be different for each run of the program, or may change along the same run. In those situations, one needs a hash function which takes two parameters, the input data Z, and a number N of allowed hash values. A common solution is to compute a fixed hash function with a very large range, divide the result by n, and use the division's remainder. If n is itself a power of 2, this can be done by bit masking and bit shifting. When this approach is used, the hash function must be chosen so that the result has fairly uniform distribution between 0 and n-1. For any value of n that may occur in the application, depending on the function, the remainder may be uniform only for certain values of n, e.g., odd or prime numbers. We can allow the table size n to not be a power of 2 and still not have to perform any remainder or division operation, as these computations are sometimes costly. For example, let n be significantly less than 2b. Consider a pseudo-random number generator function p that is uniform on the interval 0, 2b-1. A hash function uniform on the interval 0, n1, is np, 2b. We can replace the division by a right bit shift, np greater than greater than b. Variable range with minimal movement where the hash function is used to store values in a hash table that outlives the run of the program, and the hash table needs to be expanded or shrunk. The hash table is referred to as a dynamic hash table, a hash function that will relocate the minimum number of records when the table is, where z is the key being hashed and n is the number of allowed hash values, such that h equals h with probability close to n. Linear hashing and spiral storage are examples of dynamic hash functions that execute in constant time but relax the property of uniformity to achieve the minimal movement property. Extendable hashing uses a dynamic hash function that requires space proportional to n to compute the hash function, and it becomes a function of the previous keys that have been inserted. Several algorithms that preserve the uniformity property but require time proportional to n to compute the value of h have been invented. Data normalization In some applications, the input data may contain features that are irrelevant for comparison purposes. For example, when looking up a personal name, it may be desirable to ignore the distinction between upper and lower case letters. 
For such data, one must use a hash function that is compatible with the data equivalence criterion being used. That is, any two inputs that are considered equivalent must yield the same hash value. This can be accomplished by normalizing the input before hashing it, as by uppercasing all letters. Continuity, a hash function that is used to search for similar data must be as continuous as possible. Two inputs that differ by a little should be mapped to equal or nearly equal hash values. Note that continuity is usually considered a fatal flaw for checksums, cryptographic hash functions, and other related concepts. Continuity is desirable for hash functions only in some applications, such as hash tables used in nearest neighbor search. Non-invertible in cryptographic applications, hash functions are typically expected to be practically non-invertible, meaning that it is not realistic to reconstruct the input datum X from its hash value H alone without spending great amounts of computing time.